Step one in this lab will consist of performing an Nmap scan on the Windows Vulnerable 01 system. We will be performing an intense scan with the Zenmap GUI. Please double click the Zenmap GUI icon and go ahead and select Intense Scan from the drop down box. From there, we will go ahead and take note of the syntax that is used to perform the scan by Nmap. We will first scan the entire subnet to identify which hosts are alive on that particular subnet and perform the scan on that host. We will go ahead and review the ports and the services that were identified by clicking on the ports tab, topology, and host details on the corresponding Zenmap GUI. Under scans, you see there's an unsaved scan with the command line syntax of the scan we run. We are going to save that scan to the student's desktop. We'll name that scan Vulnerable Windows 01. Click Save. And we'll go ahead and minimize and or close the ZenMap application so that we can identify and see the XML. Step number two in Lab 4 consists of running a vulnerability scan with the Nessus product. When you double click Nessus and you connect to the server with your browser, you will log in as student or instructor. And the first step would be to click on policies and create or add a new policy. During this process, we will select the TCP scan under port scanners. We will save a knowledge base of the scan and we will stop the host scan on disconnect. Designate hosts by their DNS name when possible, and then we can click Next on this particular screen. During the credential screen, we are not performing a credential scan. Uh, we are performing a blind scan, so we'll just select Next there. As you can see, there is a large amount of plugins available to target your scan. In this case, we will enable all plugins, and we will click Next. Moving on, we see under preferences that we have the ability to select other preferences, but in this case, we will just submit. Once we have created the policy, we will go ahead and click scans and then click add, and we will begin the process of adding a scan based on the policy that we have just created. Once you have selected the IS317 Lab 4 policy, and inserted the IP address of Windows Vulnerable 01, we will be able to launch the scan. By moving over to Reports, and by double-clicking the scan, we will be able to see the progress of the ongoing scan. By clicking over to Reports and selecting the new report of a completed scan, we can then click Browse, double-click the results of the scan itself, and review some of the vulnerabilities that have been identified during this scan. As an example, we will double click one of these SMB vulnerabilities and page through some of these vulnerabilities that were identified during our vulnerability scan. If we go back to reports, we would like to keep a copy of this particular scan, so we will be saving the scan as an HTML export by clicking Download, HTML Export, and Submit. Once you have this full report downloaded, you'll be able to click through it and identify some of the vulnerabilities that came up during this scan, one of which we can see is quite significant, MS08-067. That is a vulnerability we will use to exploit the target machine with our Backtrack and Metasploit virtual machine. To keep a copy of this, we go to Download, we'll select the Desktop, and in this case, we'll call this Windows Vulnerable 01 Nessus.htm. 
Once we have downloaded that report, we now have a copy of it and can refer to it later. Please log out of your Nessus server. During the final step of this lab, we will be exploiting a Windows vulnerable workstation with the Backtrack Virtual Machine. Once logging into the Backtrack Virtual Machine, you will get a message that the firewall did not start. That may possibly be because the Ethernet interface is down. We verify the IP configuration by typing in ifconfig-a. If it is down, then we verify the Etsy network interfaces file to verify that the ETH is down or up as it is supposed to be. Once we have brought the ETH interface up, Firestarter will start. That is the built-in backtrack firewall. We will disable that firewall because it will hamper us exploiting the Windows VM. Once we've done that, we will go ahead and open the Metasploit Framework GUI. The Metasploit Framework GUI will allow us to exploit with a click and shoot type method the Windows Vulnerable VM. As you can see, there are a lot of exploits available. In this case, we will simply search for the vulnerability that we identified during our Nessus vulnerability scan, MS08-067. Once you have identified that exploit, we will select that exploit, double click it, and begin a targeted penetration test of the Windows vulnerable system. We will select automatic targeting, click forward. From here, we will have to identify the Windows reflective meterpreter bind TCP attack. Once you have identified that, then we will go ahead and move forward. We will then have to type in the target host or IP address of the Windows vulnerable VM. Once that's done, we should be able to review these settings and click forward and click apply. Once you have applied that, you see some jobs coming up on the top right. And as soon as the exploit is successful, you will see a session on the bottom right under sessions. Once that pops up, then indeed you are connected and you have exploited the target Windows VM. At this point, we can right click and perform an interactive session, which means get a command prompt from the target VM to come back at you from a terminal window. From here, you can see we can list the contents of the Windows System32 directory. We can also browse through the hard drive as we see fit. I have just typed the set command, giving me all sorts of information of the variables that exist on the target system. We will then close that box and select right click and browse on our session. At this point, we'll see that there will be a very convenient explorer type window come up that allows us to browse the target VM's hard drive. In this case, we will perform some browsing and we will In this case, we do. We will go ahead and minimize our session for now. We're going to create a new file on our own desktop and call that file hacked.txt. Inside that file, we're going to go ahead and type in the words you are hacked save that file and now what we will attempt to do is transfer that file via our explorer window from our client system to the target windows vm system using the exploited session that we have just created with metasploit in this case i'm going to have to browse back to desktop directory for all users by selecting this file and simply dragging it over to the right hand side directory where it is that we would like to place it. We will then drag that over, close that session, 
and we will create a new interactive session, we will verify from the CLI on that target system that indeed that hacked.txt file that we transferred over exists to log into the Windows vulnerable system and actually see that file on your desktop as a user and not know where it came from would give you a good idea of what it means